Hey, did you hear that there's gonna be a new Ford Bronco coming out after all these years? Yeah, but I saw some of those spy shots and it actually kind of concerned me. But look, the new Bronco came out. Oh my God! I was gonna clean up this entirely scruffy beard I got going on, but then I realized we're gonna be talking about off-roading in the rough country, so uh, I just left it unkempt to be with my off-roading brethren. <laughs> Guys, it finally was unveiled. The Ford Bronco we've been hearing about for years was finally shown off yesterday, and I could not be more excited. In my opinion, this unveiling could have been really bad. There's one shot in particular that was the leak of the Bronco, and I remember myself and colleagues of mine in the car industry going, I don't know, that thing doesn't look mean enough or enough like the old Bronco or looks too much like a generic SUV. It looks too much like a normal Range Rover or something. But then this comes out yesterday and I'm like, my God, they did it. And let's just say the reception was definitely better than the Mach-E, let me tell you. <laughs> now, overall, I do wanna go over the Ford Bronco today and go into a deep dive about it, what it's going to be like, and also the price points, how it's gonna possibly change the off-roading landscape when it comes to vehicles out of the factory, and also my one concern of the SUV, which we'll get to later. So the Ford Bronco was actually America's first SUV, technically. And the Ford Bronco is always known as a really fun retro kind of platform to turn into an off-roading or rock crawling mobile. When I think of the Ford Bronco, I think of being in the middle of the country and you see somebody's Bronco sitting in their front yard and it's lifted with big meaty tires on it. Like that's what I think of Ford Bronco, the big box on big tires. And that pretty much stayed that way for its entire lifespan. But with the economy and with the current state of everything, I wasn't quite sure if they were gonna go through with the Ford Bronco. I wasn't quite sure how they were gonna do this unveiling because you're not gonna have an in-person, unquarantined unveiling right now. It's just not gonna look good. I have to say, I did watch the video yesterday all the way through and well freaking done. As a person who loves filmmaking, loves cinematography, Dude, mwah, like that was incredible. All the shots look great. They absolutely demonstrate the car or the SUV, excuse me, the SUV in all the very best ways. It definitely shows you what it can do without it just saying what it can do theoretically. I mean, some of these obstacles they're going over are nuts. So I'm really glad that they had the courage to go out there and be like, listen, we did the testing, guess what? Here's the pre-production model along with pretty much the production model down the road in 2021 and this is what it's capable of. Instead of just talking out their booty and being like, yeah, it can do it, we think, right? They showed us, it can do it. I mean, think about it, four by four is standard in this thing. It has the highest ground clearance of any production vehicle in this segment or any of the competitors. When you think of off-roading, you think of Jeep, and I actually think the Bronco might change that. And on any model, as an option, you can get 35 inch tires right out of the box. Like who does that? That's amazing. There's also a hydraulic stabilized bar disconnect system. So when you're going over that really tough stuff, you can disconnect some of those bars and then you can even program it in a way to where when you get over that challenging obstacle, it'll automatically reconnect it. And I think that's fascinating. Another thing I love about it is the removable roof and the doors. And I am a sucker for the two-door, man. That two-door Bronco looks so freaking good. And not only that, it looks like a Bronco. I feel like it's one of the first modern vehicles to come out in the past five years where you're like, that's definitely what it's supposed to be, right? You look at this vehicle and you're like, that's a Bronco, new or old, that's a Bronco, it just works. It's so neat to see all the doors off and all of the roof off and the fact that you can store all of it 
in the vehicle. You don't have to just leave it somewhere, right? There's also this option where you can like have a table in the trunk. Like you can have a place to put all your gear and everything. There's an optional interior bike rack you can put in the vehicle. All of them have roof racks from the factory if you want. Like the options are just great. With all the accessories and all the options that come out of the factory of this thing, you can really make it your own right out of the box. And I think that's amazing. It doesn't feel like a gimmick where you're like paying for colored seat belts or you're just getting these little tiny things that make it more expensive. I think these accessories are definitely useful and I think that's great. The interior blew me away. I mean, the reason I say that is not that it's fancy, but because it's unfancy in a way. I love that it's modern, it's sleek, it's simple. It's literally like a plate all the way across the dash with a nice screen in the middle, great looking steering wheel, the seats look great. We won't know until I finally get my button some, but honestly, I love that it's function over form for the most part. It is like, we know why you got this vehicle. It does not have to be super bougie inside. This is what it's for, and if you think about it, that keeps costs down. Let's talk about that navigation screen. That navigation screen has off-roading navigation, it can find you trails, and at the same time, you can document what trails you wanna do, or it records basically your entire experience, if you want to, as you do the trail, and then you can share that experience with another friend who likes off-roading, basically to be like, hey, this is what I just went through, let me know if you wanna try it or not. That's an amazing way to build kind of an interesting Bronco community if you think about it. It's like, hey, I just recorded this trail. Whoever has a Bronco, you should go try it. It's also got optional 360 cam, off-roading cameras, so you have your doors off, you have your roof off, you have 360 cams, like, it's gonna be great to off-road in this thing because you will not have any fear because you'll know exactly where you are. Now, will that take some of the challenge out of it? Maybe some hardcore off-roading people will be like, no, I like having kind of that mystery of getting over stuff, right? But to me, I think you'll be able to do even harder stuff by having perfect visibility. That's my argument. Also, finally, I feel as though this vehicle, for what you get, with all of these options, four by four standard, like we said, I think it's priced really, really well. I feel like this is one of the first cars, like I said earlier with the design language, I think this is one of the first vehicles to come out in a really long time that's actually reasonable to get for the masses. And I really don't think the base model is gonna get crazy dealer markup. So if you get the base model, like think about it, you already have four by four standard, if you don't wanna get the 35 inches from the factory, you can just throw them on afterwards. The base model goes for $28,000, guys. Like, that's not bad. <laughs> that's not bad at all. And I really like that they have this huge range of specs, because there's three different models, right? There's the two-door, the four-door, the sport, the Sasquatch, there's all that stuff. In fact, there's so many models that I'm gonna open the website right now. Click. Okay, so here is the Ford website with the Bronco family being unveiled. And I have to say, when it comes to good marketing, look at this website. I mean, they have them in the wild, right? You scroll down, it's like ripping through a sand dune. It just makes you excited. I think the Bronco Sport is I think the one that I saw the leak of and I wasn't that into it. Because if you look at the body line right here, I don't know, it kind of has this, it kind of has this like Range Rover vibe. You have a whole bunch of videos of it's doing its thing, like through the water. It just demos what they're going for. So if you look here, you have the base model, the big bend, the black diamond, the outer banks, the badlands, wild track, and the first edition. Oh, the first is already full on reservations. <laughs> Holy smokes. Let's talk about and go through these individually, okay? The base, the essential Bronco. Bronco comes with only absolute essential. So essentially you can get the 35 inch tires on the base model and then you could be done, whatever. And then you could modify it, you know, at your own leisure once the aftermarket takes over, right? And even the base looks good. 
It's not like it's drastically different. I think it looks great. Big Bend, which is the mainstream off-roading. It's basically more creature comforts than the base model. It's got, yeah, leather wrap steering wheel, heated seats, aluminum wheels, power inverter, and remote start. Black Diamond is where things start to get juicy. Adventure off-roading, next level outdoor adventure comes with standard rear locking differential, steel front and rear bumpers, rock rails, heavy duty skid plates, and even the goat mode. The goat mode means it goes over any type of terrain. So I almost want to say that the guys in the design studio were so confident in the Bronco that they're like, let's just basically joke it's gonna be the greatest of all time, but we're gonna have to name it something different. Goat, it's the goat. Outer Banks is off-roading in style, so you get like the painted wheels and stuff like that, the LED headlamps, tail lamps, body color, matched fender flares, uh, 12 inch LCD touchscreen, so that's the one that we talked about earlier. This is where things get nuts. You get the positive sensitive monotube shocks, stabilizer bar disconnect, front and rear locking differentials to make the most of the capable, make this the most capable Bronco you can get. So that's what we're really getting out there. Then of course there's the wild track, which comes standard with the bead locks and everything and so on and so forth. The first edition is everything, right? And this thing comes with either a seven speed manual, a seven speed by Ford, or a 10-speed automatic. It's that awesome 10-speed you find in the Mustang and all those other great platforms. So even if you're going automatic, you're still gonna have a great power band of where you kind of choose what gear you're in. You have 10 choices. And then with manual, you have seven choices. However, I'm okay with it because I understand why Ford makes these decisions sometimes. I think a lot of people are gonna be upset that there's no V8 model or at least a 3.5 EcoBoost model, like out of the Raptor or something. Imagine if the first edition had the 3.5 EcoBoost in it or something. That would make the first edition really desirable in my opinion. It is coming with the 2.3 EcoBoost, which is similar to, you know, the Mustang EcoBoost, the Focus RS, all that good stuff. And also the 2.7 EcoBoost, which is what you'll find in like the Edge ST or something like that, or some F-150s. In my opinion, it's still gonna be a really, really fun vehicle to drive with the seven speed especially. And the good thing about these EcoBoost motors is that their bottom end torque is actually really good. At the same time, if you think about it, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, your gas mileage is gonna be better. I'm, I'm really trying here. <laughs> like, I'm trying to kind of understand it and it's more affordable for Ford to make these with the EcoBoost motors than do more Coyotes or stuff like that. The Ford Bronco, what do I think of it? Guys, I'm excited. I'm legitimately excited that there was a Ford unveil that I was like, you did it. It looks the part. I'm excited to see these things on the road. I think that they're gonna capture a lot of people's imagination and go, wow, that's the Ford Bronco. It's not like with the Mustang Mach-E SUV unveil where it's like, I really love the car, maybe change the name. Guys, what do you think about the new Ford Bronco? Please let me know what you have to say in the comment section below. And on that note, I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and I will see you guys next time and take it easy. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye. This video is brought to you by Patterson Car Care. Get double of premium original detail product for half the price. Head over to pattersoncarcare.com or go to the link in the description below.